here with another super exciting video. This one is my first video for summer because it is a travel video. Obviously you can use this for other times of the year as well, but since summer is almost here and a lot of people travel in the summer, I'm going to generalize this to the summertime. In this video I will be showing you all some different DIY snack recipes, tips for packing and just traveling in general along with my essentials and what I like to keep in my carry-on. If you make any of the recipes, be sure to tag me in a photo on Instagram or Twitter. My Instagram is Kaylee underscore Elise, and my Twitter is Kaylee with a capital K, Elise with a capital E, and then a capital W. So I think that's about all, and let's hop right into it. I'll be showing you all how to make both caramel and lemon cookie biscuit type of things. Starting off with the caramel cookies, in a blender you're going to put in 1 tablespoon of coconut oil, 3 tablespoons of applesauce, 1 cup plain yogurt, and 6 dates, and then you're just going to blend it up. Then take a separate bowl and in it you're going to put 1.5 cups flour, your liquid blended up mixture, an eighth a cup of brown sugar, a pinch of salt and baking soda, and one egg. Mix that all up completely until 100% smooth, and then you're going to take your cookie tray, spray it down with oil, and I'm using this cookie dough former thing. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but basically just makes the cookies into little balls that are all the same size. You can definitely use a spoon though instead. Also, these won't actually flatten down in the oven like normal cookies do, so you're going to have to use a spatula to flatten them each out. For the lemon cookies in a bowl, just put in one and a half cups flour, 1 tablespoon lemon juice, 3 tablespoons applesauce, 1 tablespoon melted coconut oil, an eighth a cup of sugar, 1 egg, a pinch of salt and baking soda, and 1 cup plain yogurt. Once it's all mixed up, you can just put those on the cookie tray as well and stick those in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for only 10 minutes because after 10 minutes, you're going to take them back out of the oven. In the lemon ones, you're going to put a mini Glutino lemon wafer bite. And in the caramel ones, you're going to put a Glutino salted caramel covered pretzel. Because this will make them really unique and have a nice crunch in the middle, which I really like. I think they taste so good this way, you don't have to do it like this. But I personally think they taste amazing this way. So now you can put them back in the oven for 10 more minutes and they will be done. Next thing is super easy to make, this is great if you have no time, and that is trail mix. So in mine I'm going to put these Glutino animal crackers in both the flavor original and graham. Any types of dried fruit you like, I'm using cranberries since that's all we had. And lastly some nuts, I decided to go with almonds and walnuts. Basically all I did was just layer them each one by one in a container and I was done. You were walking on the moon, now you're feeling like now it's time to make a healthy, delicious, very easy veggie cream cheese spread. All you need for this is just some low-fat cream cheese and veggies of your choice. I decided to go with both tomatoes and bell peppers because that's what we really had at that time. But you could definitely use cucumbers, celery, or carrots if you want more of a crunchy one. Dice up your vegetables into small little bits. Then I got all of the extra liquid off of the vegetables because if there's that water on them, then it'll make it harder to mix up. So I did that, put them in a bowl along with the same amount of cream cheese. I had about four tablespoons vegetables and then four tablespoons of cream cheese. To mix it up, you're going to have to do it in a little different way because if you just stir it up like soup, it's not going to really mix. You have to kind of press the cream cheese and the vegetables and then stir it, so it's basically like press, stir, press, stir, over and over again. My favorite things to have this on are all from Glutino, and those are their cheddar crackers, original bagel chips, and their pretzel chips. Sticks and stones, break your bones, I know what you're feeling, words like those won't steal your glove. I would recommend putting the crackers or chips in one container and then the cream cheese in another one so then the chips or whatever you're using it on won't get soggy. And then when you're ready, you can just spread the cream cheese on and enjoy. Now it's time to 
time for a very healthy option, and that is this honey mustard crunch salad. Here's what you'll need. Lettuce, bell pepper, tomato, mustard, vegetable oil, I decided to go with avocado oil, honey, and avocado. Basically, just start off by chopping up all your veggies and put those into a container. To make them have a crunch and more of a unique flavor, I put on these Glutino honey mustard pretzels, along with their parmesan and garlic chips, which taste just like croutons. Literally, I tried them and I was like, oh my gosh, these taste just like gluten-free croutons. So, it was awesome. The dressing was so simple. All I did was put in one spoon of avocado oil, a half a spoon of honey, and a half a spoon of mustard, and then I mixed that up and put it on the salad. If it's going to be a little while until you're eating the salad, I would recommend putting the dressing in a little side container so then your salad won't get all soggy. And now you're done! I absolutely love it, I think you all will too, and yeah! Lastly, for those of you who have a sweet tooth, don't worry because I've got you with these flavored stuffed gluten-free Oreos. All you need is these Glutino chocolate vanilla cream cookies, blackberries for one, and peanut butter for the other one. Take two small bowls, in one of them put a spoonful of peanut butter, the other one about five raspberries or blackberries, and then the peanut butter is already liquid, but the blackberries aren't, so just take a fork and begin to mash them up. Take a couple Oreos, I did five for each flavor, and then just open them up, take all the filling, put it in the bowl with the peanut butter and the raspberries, and then you can just mix that all up until completely smooth and put those back into the Oreo cookies. With the peanut butter and the blackberries go in it so well. And I love these, so you definitely have to try them. And now it is officially time for a mini episode of... What's in my carry-on slash what's in my backpack? First of all, this backpack is from Target. It is from the company Trans by Jansport. So basically, in the back of it, right here, there's this cool little compartment that you can open up, and it is made just for your laptop. In this mini pocket in front of it, it fits my iPod perfectly. Moving on to this big main compartment, First off, I have my lunchbox. Next, I have a book. Being in the airplane or the car for a long time is the perfect opportunity for reading since you actually have time to do that stuff. Like, I personally don't really have that much time to read any other time. This book is Live Original by Sadie Robertson. I've been meaning to read this for a really long time, but I haven't gotten to it, so that's in there. YouTube journal for planning out videos. Always have to have this with me. A water bottle so you don't get thirsty. If you're going to the airport, then just make sure it's empty. And then once you get through security, you can fill it up as a water fountain or you can just buy a drink and you put that in there. Also, my purse. So yeah, that's everything that I like to keep with me in my carry-on or backpack for going on my travel journey. Moving on to tips, these are some things that will help make your whole travel experience a whole lot better and they're things that I like to do when traveling. Number one is to exercise before getting on the plane or car since you'll be sitting down for a long time and you will get tired of it so always make sure to exercise beforehand. Number two would be to dress lightly and then bring a light sweater in case it gets cold because you never know what the plane temperature will be. Sometimes it's really hot, but other times it's really cold. And lastly, for packing, I found that if you just roll up your clothes, it'll make it so you can fit a lot more in your suitcase. And yeah. everything for my travel video. I hope you all found this helpful and got some inspiration from it. If you did, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and want to see more videos from me. By the way, if you try any of the food ideas, I would love to see them, so be sure to tag me in a photo on either Instagram or Twitter. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!